Hello everyone, welcome to Han's Garage. Today we're going to replace left and right control arms, control arm bushings, and outer and inner tie rods. We are at the driver's side and I have not yet to replace the control arm and the bushing on this side and I'm going to show you how bad it is by kicking the tire. It should not move like this at all. It seems like the bushing is really bad on this one. And now we are at the passenger side and I've already replaced the bushing and the control arm. I'm going to show you how it is. It doesn't move at all. Here we have brand new control arm, brand new polyurethane bushing, an older control arm and older rubber bushing. And I'm going to show you how bad it was. Just look at this. It was so bad. And this time, this entire time, my car was shaking while I was turning, driving, braking. And you can see the ball joints, very loose. So I'm going to explain one thing about bushing. Of course, the polyurethane is a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it because when you install it, it's extremely easy. You can just press it in by no tools. You don't need any tools. Just press it in and put the outer bushing in. And you are ready to install just like that. Whereas if you were to get a regular bushing, you would need special tool to take it off and put it in. And it takes about 30 minutes. I did it last time on my previous car. It took about an hour for me to install this onto the control arm and then install it to the car. Whereas this one, you could just take it off with your hand also. Just like that. How easy is that? And of course, the ball joints are very sturdy on this one as well. So let's get started. To take your wheel off, you need 17 millimeter socket. Now I'm going to turn the wheel so you guys can see it better. I'm going to show you how loose this ball joint is by just moving my tie rod back and forth. It should not move like this. To take this bolt off, you need 18 millimeter socket. There are two ways you can take off this ball joint. One would be using the original nut and just screwing a little bit on there and then hammering this and then hammering this down or you can use a tie rod puller and you can buy this for $15 and you can latch this on there and screw this part in and then push the tie rod out but I'm going to try to install the original nut on this and then push it down with the tie rod puller. Right. 
And now we are going to take the boot off. And this is what we need to take off. And using an adjustable wrench, we're taking this off. And your tie rod is off. Alright, so I have to take off this ball joint and this ball joint. But since I can't get the camera up there, I'm going to explain with my new control arm. So here is the new control arm. So what I'm doing up there is to take this wall joint off. I am using 6 millimeter Allen wrench to hold down the ball joint and using 22 millimeter to take the screw off. So I'm holding this down and I'm taking the screw off to take this ball joint off which is this side. Now I'm going to take the other ball joint off, which is 18 millimeters. Now we're going to take off the control arm bushing, which is 16 millimeters. And it's loose. I've taken all the screws off, but the mounts, I guess, they were so, so, so tight, so I put a WD-40 on it. I'm just waiting for it to lubricate the mold. Same thing for the driver's side. We're taking off 22 millimeter nut here and holding the ball joint with 6 millimeter Allen wrench. And then for this side, it's 18 millimeters. I'm going to put some WD-40 on there.
Here is another comparison. We just took this one out and you can see the bushing is really, really bad. And this one is not moving at all. And the ball joints, very loose. All right, let's install the control arm now. Alright, so 16 millimeter bolts, 22, and 18 millimeter bolts. Now we're going to install the boot. So what you need to do is to take apart the inner and outer tie rod. Take out all the bolts. Put the nut back again. outer tie rod I'm going to get the steering rack out so it's easier for me to install
So usually when you replace the tie rod, the main concern is, is my new tie rod alignment going to be as perfect as my older tie rod? The answer is no, because even if you try to count how many times the outer tie rod took to take off from the inner tie rod, um, it doesn't mean you have a perfect wheel alignment. So what people usually do is they would count um, how many times the outer tie rod took to come off from the inner tie rod. So they would start from the original position from here and they would start to unscrew. And whenever they make a full rotation, that's count as one and two and three and so on. And let's say it took about 21 times to get this outer tie rod completely off from the inner tie rod. And that's the number that people remember to screw on the new outer tie rod to the inner tie rod 21 times and then they think that would be that should be good enough for the wheel alignment but I wouldn't want to drive on it because I kind of don't want to wear out my tires prematurely so I highly recommend going to a store or a shop that you go to to get your wheels perfectly aligned